Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be building this BR57 armoured train from Hoppy Boss. This is the 172nd scale version. There's also a 135th scale version by Hobby Boss's sister company Trumpeter, but I did think that might be slightly too large for my uh, shelves. Now if we look inside the box we see the first sprue has the bases for the engine and the tender. The second sprue has the wheels for the tender and a few other components, axles and so on. The third sprue has the wheels for the engine itself. And impressively the engine itself is one single piece, but despite that it has a good amount of detail on the side. And equally the tender is another single piece, which will just hook into the back of that. So this is not a huge kit and it shouldn't take a large amount of time to build. And then finally we have two more sprues here which build the underneath of the engine and the tender. We also get two sprues like this, so four pieces of track bed in total. The sleepers here look quite nice and I probably won't use these pieces simply because I have a different plan for the uh, train. The Hobby Boss instructions are pretty clear. There's only a small amount of work done in each step which makes it easy to follow your progress. We start by building the underneath of the engine, putting the platform on top, then that large piece of armour plating, a few small bits and pieces here and there, and then very much a similar process for the tender. As I say, I couldn't find a huge amount of information about this train online but it was used to form part of the BP-42 and the BP-44 armoured trains. And these armoured trains were pretty well protected. They had infantry wagons and command wagons, flak wagons for air protection, artillery wagons, they had tank transporters and armoured car transporters, and even later versions had a wagon with a Panzer IV turret on it. So there's quite a lot of firepower on these trains. And if you want to recreate one of these wagons, it's possible to do it in 135th scale because Trumpeter produced everything you'll need, and also in 172nd scale with the same kits from Hobby Boss. As you can see, the underside of the engine builds up nicely. There are very few parts here. I imagine on a larger scale that these wheels and the rods would all be separate, but it's really convenient here to have them in this scale as a single piece. The only thing you have to watch out for is that some of the sprue gates are a bit big, and it can be hard to tell what is a part of the piece and what is a part of the sprue gate. Check twice before cutting them off sometimes. And once the underside is complete, this plate goes on top. Because the interior here is not going to be seen, I made sure I put lots of glue on to keep it in place. One slightly strange feature is this front of the boiler here, which is very nicely detailed, is completely covered up by the armour plating. There's no way you're ever going to see that. You could even leave the piece off to be honest, but uh, I put it in anyway. And the only pieces I had trouble with were these pieces of armour on the front sides. They didn't really line up with the slots that were intended for them, and I had to do a bit of cutting and a bit of sanding to get them in there. It's not clear from the instructions if they should be slightly rising um, compared to the rest of the armour, but nevertheless there was a bit of a gap that needed dealing with. But that was only a minor problem. The tender builds up very much the same way as the engine, starting with the wheels. The sprue gates are in an annoying place here in that they overlap the uh, wheel in a way that makes it hard not to lose that, uh, that fine detail. But it builds up perfectly well. Axles and wheels. A flat platform bed and then the top section. And there are just a few details on the end. A 
and a couple of details on the roof. One thing worth noting is that there's no cab detail. This just stays open here. That's not a huge problem because the tender goes on and essentially removes that gap. But it does mean that you couldn't have the engine on its own without the tender. Whereas the tender itself does have that gap closed up so you could have the tender on its own. And although I'm not going to use it, you can see here how the engine fits on top of the rail bed. And one piece is virtually the size of the engine and there are four of them in total, so there's plenty of room to uh, manoeuvre there. And you could probably get an extra wagon on there as well. In terms of painting, the instructions give a single scheme here, which will be very familiar to any armour model as it's a standard German uh, later war tricolour scheme. I did consider painting this in a grey colour instead, but I also have the BR52 which is going to be in grey, so I decided to go for the yellow scheme. I gave everything a base coat of a dark grey colour. Normally this would be NATO black, but I don't have any NATO black at the moment. And I did this to provide a shadow coat and to allow me to thinly put on the yellow coat and still have some of this darkness showing through. And that's going to help me achieve a dirty one look for the top coat. To get the yellow, I used a mix of these two AK Real colours. These are both variants of the Dunkelgelb. As you can see, they're quite different. The one on the right is a little bit too saturated for me, so I did a 50-50 mix roughly of these. And here you can see the result of me applying that mix very thinly, quite lightly, deliberately allowing a lot of that black to show through. As I say, that will form the basis of the weathering because it starts to give that slightly dirty look already. And in the end, I did decide to add some red-brown and some dark green camouflage stripes. I applied them very lightly with some very thin paint to keep the muted appearance of the train. Detail painting was done with Vallejo acrylics and AK Real colours. And then I mixed up some Abtai Lung 502 oil paints to use as a pin wash. Here you can see because the surface is a bit matte that the wash is soaking into that slightly, but that can be cleaned up later without too much of drama. There are a lot of rivets on this engine, so this took some time. And I cleared up any excess wash with a brush dampened in enamel thinners. For the final stage of the weathering I wanted a light dust coat which I mixed from flat earth and buff with a small amount of grey. And I sprayed that thinly over the bottom half of the engine. It's just barely visible. It wasn't very heavy weathering but it's the way I wanted it. And with that the project was complete.
Okay guys, that was my BR57 armoured locomotive from Hobby Boss. I'm really happy with the very subdued, uh, desaturated look of this final vehicle. I've got a nice idea for where I'm going to put this, in a kind of snowy, cold, wintry diorama, and I think that this uh, subdued tone will fit in well with that. I realise I could have done a lot more weathering in terms of uh, stains perhaps from the uh, boiler, or perhaps some uh, coal stains around the tender, but I'm quite happy with it the way it is at the moment. So before I go, let me take a moment to say thank you very much to my kind Patreon supporters. Their continued support makes it possible to buy supplies and kits for this channel, and I really am grateful for that, so thank you very much guys. My next video is hopefully going to be the jungle diorama for the Rect Zero which I built last video. So if you'd like to see that and you haven't already subscribed then please remember to hit the subscribe button. And until next time, thank you for watching.